Hebrews, this book was written as a warning to the early believers. And these early believers, they were tempted to revert back to their old ways due to persecution and hardship. And so when I began to look at this book, I began to think about all of the things that's going on in the world today and some of the things that we as Christians go through and how we can sometimes get discouraged and want to revert back to our old ways. So I began to look at this verse. I was looking at the first four verses at first for a while. And then I just was cueing in on this first verse. And to me, this first verse makes it very plain for us. It's very simple. And it really stood out to me. And I believe that this is what the Lord wants us to hear. So today I'll be talking to you from a message entitled, How to Move Forward and Not Backwards. If we look at the verse, it says, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard. So the first thing that we have to do in order to move forward and not backward is we have to remember what we have heard. We have to remember who we are. We have to remember the things that the Lord has spoken into our lives. Because as these early Christians, as they were living in the time, they were going through hardships and persecution. And although they were going through this, they were still God's chosen people. And so sometimes we begin to go through things in our life and things don't look like what God had told us. But we know that we can, our faith does not go by the things that we see. Our faith goes by the things that we have heard and what we hear comes from the word of God. And so when we remember what the word of God has to say to us about who we are, then we are able to continue to move forward. We may look backwards to shine light on some of the people or some of the situations that we were in while we were in the darkness, but we have to understand and remember that what God has told us is true. What God has called you to be, you will be. Where God told you he is going to take you, he will take you. So no matter what the situation may look like, whether you're broke, unemployed, if your car broke down, if your car starts and stops, no matter what the situation may be and how we see it, we have to remember what the Lord spoke to us. Amen. The Lord said that I came so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so when we are here on this earth and we are going through these things and we are seeing the different situations and people are coming up against us, we have to remember that we aren't here for us. We are here to do the work of the Lord. We are here and while we are waiting and doing that work, we're waiting on Jesus to come back for us so that we can have that abundant life. And so we have to remember what we heard. He says, be paid the most careful attention to what we have heard. We can't pay the most careful attention to what we see. Because as we see when we talked about uh, Jacob last week, he was in the promised land, but there was still famine. We can be in the place where the Lord has us, but there still be some situations that has to be worked out. And sometimes we have to go through those situations in order for the Lord to make and mold us for what he has us to do on the next level. And so we have to remember, remember, remember what the Lord has spoken to his people. Things may not look so good for you. Things may not look so good for your friend. But we have to remember what the Lord told us together. Sometimes we have to encourage each other. Because, don't get me wrong, it can be discouraging. You begin to get confused. But the thing that we have to do is remember what we heard. The Lord has spoken into all of our lives. It's up to us. It says, we must pay the most careful attention. So we can't rely on somebody else to pay attention for us. Right. We have to pay attention. We have to pay the most careful attention to what the Lord has spoken to you. Because you know what the Lord spoke to you. Some, you may have told somebody else, but they don't have the facts like you have the facts. Right. Because the Lord said it to you. They, you may tell them what the Lord spoke to you, but they may interpret it entirely differently than what the Lord was trying to tell you. And so what we have to do is remember what the Lord told us. Remember why we are living here during these times of hardship and persecution. And just define hardship because sometimes we say we're going through hardship and it's really not hardship. Laid on some bills is really not hardship if they still on. They can still they can be cut off, but you're still inside the house. And so we have to really understand what is hardship. What is persecution? Persecution is not just somebody talking about you or lying on you. We have there's people that has been killed 
healed for the gospel. So we have to really understand what we're going through. We have to remember, remember, remember what the Lord has spoken to you. What has the Lord spoken to this congregation? Does it look like what the Lord spoke? And that's where faith comes in because if we could see everything, there would be no need for faith. Right. Some of our faith needs to be strengthened. If we remember Jacob, he, the Lord told him not to go down to Egypt to stay in the land that he told him. And he stayed in that land, however, he did not believe. He did not have the faith. And what we have to do is we have to get the faith that the Lord wants us to have. Once we begin to remember what the Lord said and believe it, we will be at peace. We will have peace in our household. We will have peace on our job. We will have peace in our ministry. We will be at peace once we begin to believe what the Lord said. We can't always remember what we want to do because what we want to do may not be what God wants us to do. Remember, remember, remember what the Lord has spoken to you. Go back in the text. Go back in the Bible. Remember, remember, there's stories. There's nothing new under, under the sun. We have to remember what the word of God says. We have to have faith in the Lord for whatever it is that he's trying to do for us. Our children have faith. We have to have faith. We have to believe, no matter what it looks like. So it's like we're walking around with a blindfold on. We can be hearing gunshots and any crashes, wars, anything. We can be hearing all of that stuff, but we have to stay focused on what the Lord has told us. We have to continue to do what the Lord has told us to do. He says we must. This is a must. This is not something that you should. We must remember. We have to pay attention. We have to, our faith has to grow daily. We have to trust that God is going to do what he said that he's going to do. We have to trust that the Lord is our provider, even if we don't have the state. Allow him to be your provider with the Roman noodles. He has provided for you. It may not be what you want, but he has still provided for you. We have to understand that the Lord has given us this word, this word here. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. The Lord has given us all individually. We can go to the Lord for ourselves. If we have any questions, the Lord has given us the word. And we hear it and we have to remember it. And remembering it is not just quoting it. Remembering it is acting on it. Believing it. Sharing it. Believing what the Lord has written in this word is true. Not only for me, not only for you, but for everybody in the world. Remember, remember, remember what you heard. And so it says, so that we do not drift away. So not only do we have to remember what we heard, we also have to remember that our future is at hand. The decisions that we make affects our future. It says, remember what you, we must pay the most careful attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. Remember I said we can't just hear it, but we have to act on it. If we just hear it, we may begin to drift away. If we can think of a sailboat that's not anchored, mm. it begins to just sail away slowly and slowly and slow. And next thing you know, boat gone. We have to stay anchored in the word of God and remember what he has told us because how we respond today affects our future. Whether we're obedient or disobedient, it's going to affect our future. Whether we are obedient in our homes, it's going to trickle down. We have to be obedient to what the Lord is telling us to do. Our future is our children. Remember what you heard. Train up a child in the way that they should go. Our future is at hand. We have to know that what the Lord has told us to do, we have to do it no matter what anybody else is doing. Our future is at hand and there are consequences. There was consequences in the Old Testament. There's consequences in the New Testament. But we also have to remember our future is supposed to be an abundant life with Jesus if we abide by what the word of God is telling us to do. And so this new year where everybody has made these New Year's resolutions and, and this first Sunday in January, this first Sunday of 2013, all I would say to you in Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. 
plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So no matter what your situation may look like, no matter what anybody else is saying to you or about you, I would say for you, move forward and not backwards because God is waiting on you. Amen? Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this day, God. We thank you for the word that you have given us, God. I just pray that you strengthen each and every one of us, oh God. I pray that you strengthen us to walk boldly into what you have for us, oh God. I pray that you strengthen us, oh God, to seek your face when we become discouraged, oh God. And I just pray, oh God, that you continue to lead and guide us in all that we do, Lord. Lord, we need you, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.